We've all come to know this object, the object that apparently has been around for a very long time, an object many have seen before, many have even tried to shout out, point out, many didn't listen. I'd have to include myself amongst that number. Frankly, I did not know about this object until recently. So I applaud all of those pioneers who saw this before. And we have to begin to consider all possibilities. This object that has fascinated us, excuse me, and all because of this satellite called Stereo. And it has really, well, definitely expanded our thinking. And what I'm going to show you here now is going to have to require you to expand your perception and understanding even further. So to kind of just review here, a lot of controversy, lens flare, anomaly of the camera. You know, I think that those debates will continue regardless of what I say. Uh, until NASA or the United States government or Navy observatory come forth and give us um, a press conference and bring their experts and tell us really what we're seeing. Until then, all of us are speculating. And that's how science sometimes really comes about, just by speculation. This object is now showing up in uh, the visible light spectrum. As you can see here, very clear. There it is right there, and there is the parachute. I called it a sail. I think we will probably go with the concept of a parachute. I think that that adequately, accurately describes what we're seeing here. Again, very clear. Um, I'll even blow this one up for you. So there it is. Very clear. There it is as well. Now for full disclosure, Steve Olson introduced myself and Chris Potter to a tenure professor in physics. And that individual has been very kind in tutoring us. And Chris has done a marvelous job, and trust me, he will probably do a, a, a much better job than I am in explaining the response that we have now gotten back from our physicists. So, just so it is understood um, that we share the information. Now, what you're about to hear you're going to have to begin to understand um, what laws of physics are, what laws of physics can be bent. Now, I know that'll get some controversy, but they can be. Uh, and, and, you know, when you get into laws of physics, remember... Uh, a great deal of it is still theoretical. So let's get to this object here, right here. Ladies and gentlemen, it very well could be that everything that WSO, Steve Olson, Chris Potter, Thor News. I'll put in as well as Secure Keem 10. 
and um, Nibiru Watcher. There, there is just so many. Jeff P. We may have all been recording the very same device that we have all seen around the International Space Station. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I am here to make the announcement that it is our position in theory that we are not seeing so much spaceship that we may very well be seeing a sun simulator. Now I'm not going to get into a lot of this. I am going to show you and if any of you want to take your screen captures you can. Chris will get into this much more detailed but I am here merely to announce to you that we really do now firmly believe that this object is not is not heading to Venus is not going to in any way interfere with the orbit of Venus that what this is is that this object is rotating or orbiting around the Earth and that when it gets into the orbit of Venus that we begin to see the interaction that what this craft is very well could be a sun simulator. Now I know that that may seem hard to handle. That's fine. But it makes the most sense to me now in explaining what this craft is, how we see it coming around, why we see it the way we do from Sechi, understanding how Sechi is set up, and I'll show you again with where this satellite is viewing. And quite frankly, I, I, I'm still digesting this myself, but it, it makes the most sense why we see the anomalies um, coming from this craft. And it is a craft. It's not a lens flare. Um, and when you begin to tie all of this together, it begins to make a lot of sense. I mean, we've talked about a simulation sun. Chris Potter has done some of the best videos on that. And with the help of our professor, we're understanding a lot more. Now, I'm just going to go down, uh, and like I said, I'm going to let Chris Potter really get into the details of this, because this is detailed. But I want to show you, because I think I owe it to you, um, in the videos that I have produced to let you know that here is our object and it is our belief that what Sechi is catching is that as the earth and as this orbit goes around that's why we're getting the reaction and it makes sense when you think about the type of potential power that's being generated off this device, that it would have a plasma <laughs> reaction um, very often. Now, does this solve the mystery of the baffle? No, it doesn't. I don't think it solves anything. And again, this is a, a theory. I'm putting it out there. It is a theory. But I happen to think that it is one that makes complete sense. And as you can see, um, our professor really gets into the detail of how all of this is beginning to potentially line up. Now, that's a Labor Day weekend. I have family, and trust me, um, I catch holy hell uh, for putting these videos out uh, because it does take away from family and um so 
understand we're part of the family of man and that's why I do this so there's a lot of answers we're going to get into a lot more um, but I just wanted to end this with you there may be a very logical answer to this of a science that we have been identifying that we have been recording that we have suspected but it could very well be now that we're putting the pieces together so have yourselves a great weekend I am sure Chris will do a much better job on this than I did it is not my forte he has a gift for this uh, but I wanted to show you that it is a good possibility that we may have found the answer. All right.